Welcome to Losers Lounge. I'm your host, Ronnie Power. Please welcome my guest, Bo Bridges, tonight. <laughs> What's up, Bo? How are you? Doing good. How are you? Awesome. Doing very well. Very well. So, howdy, folks. Uh, don't talk to me. <laughs> you see our naked wall here? I see the naked wall. Um, I was told that you brought something to put on said naked wall. I did bring something. I brought a local loser sticker. Ronnie told me that he is going to start um, putting stickers on this wall. And as he has guests here, uh, he's going to have them bring a sticker, any sticker of their choice. It can be a, uh, I don't know, a pornographic sticker, a shop sticker, a brand sticker, a team sticker, whatever. We're going to stick it up on this wall. That's the plan. So let's see if I can get this backing off of this sticker. <laughs> Is that a local loser sticker? <clears throat> put it right up here. Not in the middle. Put it right down here. Okay. And you'll put them right there. <laughs> can I jump on your couch? Yeah, I guess. It's an expensive couch. Whatever. Can't use it anymore. <laughs> it's in here. <laughs> this couch is pretty comfy. So what's up? What's new? Not much. Um, I think you're supposed to be asking the questions, actually. <laughs> yeah, you're interviewing me. So go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk about this. What is this? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Losers Lounge. It's a new uh, talk show that we're going to be doing. A new segment from the local losers. Yeah. From Ronnie. Yeah. It was his me. idea. It was, I, all this was his idea. We'll get into that. <laughs> um, we're going to have a guest every month. We're going to do it once a month right now. The last Thursday of every month is when I plan on this coming out. Thursday nights at 5 o'clock is my plan. Are you going to do this live? No. Maybe eventually <laughs> if it works out well, we'll go live. We should have done this one live. It would have been such a great <laughs> train wreck. <laughs> um, so we'll see how it goes. If, right. if we do it live, we're going to have to figure something out with another camera to shoot. With which isn't that big of a deal. I mean, we can find a camera. Yeah. If anybody wants to donate, like a, a red camera, <laughs> we, we we're accepting donations. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um. Anyways, we're gonna talk about people's car history, hot topics in the car community, um, local events going on. We plan on getting a list of events that we can put up on the walls, one of the two walls that will be all local events going on. Um, mm -hmm. Like a calendar type thing? Yeah, you know, and just a list, and it'll just have like the date and the event. And, and yeah. you know, if people have questions they can ask. And I want to let you guys know that if you have any questions for our guests, it doesn't matter who it is, um, go ahead and put them down in the comments. And uh, I'll make sure to ask those questions, and we can kind of go from there and see how it goes. Right on. Um, well, that sounds fun. Yeah, that sounds fun. It sounds awesome. Yeah, I think that was all that we talked about, right? I think so. If anything changes, we'll let you guys know. We're gonna give it a couple, couple tries to see if this uh, is a, a, a win or a fail, <laughs> and we'll, we'll go see. from there. If you're uh, watching this a year from now and this is, you know, there's only six episodes, it was a fail. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube lasts forever. <laughs> Do YouTube videos last forever? I think so. Hmm. I mean, who's that guy that sings all those funny songs? What's his name? The he, Froggy Fresh guy? Yeah. yeah. Froggy Fresh, dude. He's been on there for a long time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, and his account died forever ago. Anyway. Well, let's get started. So, tell us something that we don't know about you, Bo. Uh, something that you don't know. Um, let's see. I like cars a lot, but everybody knows that. I like drifting, but everybody knows that. God, I'm such an open book. <laughs> um, you're bald, everybody knows that. I got into drifting in like 1999 when the internet was still an infant. That was before I was born. <laughs> in 1999, there were like three web pages, and two of them were drifting web pages. <laughs> um, I remember Salady Mania, Salady Mania, which I think was run by Benson Hsu. Um, there was the uh, Slide Squad web page. Dave Schultz and, man, 
I don't know these guys, so personally, <laughs> so I don't remember their name. Mark something? He's just fanboying. <laughs> I'm totally fanboying. <laughs> um, so, I got this uh, Super Street back in 1998, Dang, I think it was. Street. It was the Drift Issue. It was called the Drift Issue <laughs> on, the t- on the top. and uh, <clears throat> It had Ricky Chu's um, S14 that was SR20 swapped on the front. And, uh, so, inside, a US car. Yeah, yeah, it was a USDM car. Um, it, uh, inside, it had like all these uh, drift cars, like the top 10 drift cars. And nobody knew what drifting was back then, really. So, when you um, say top 10 drift cars, was it like top 10 chassis or was it top 10 like drift cars that are in the states it was, top, like it was top 10 chassis because there were no builds okay. that anybody knew about in the states because social media expanded that so much and there was no social media back then yeah everybody um, knows everybody now. yeah yeah everybody knows everybody you see you see somebody's car and you show it to a <laughs> random person they walk up to on the street they're like oh yeah i know him blah, 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 blah. yeah <laughs> this list of cars was you know a few of them were cars that i'd never even heard of like skylines and things like that sylvia's and whatnot um, I think the first, the number one was a 86, was an A86. Interesting. The number two was like an S13 or something like that. But uh, it got me really fired up until I got my first drift car in uh, 2002, I think it was. What was your first drift car? It was a, an S14. It was a base model, slick top S14. So this is the one that got destroyed? Yes, in the tornado. <laughs> it was. Um, it was uh, I got it for $3,500. In 2002, and it was a 96. That's crazy. Yeah, and now you know you want an S14 now. You can <laughs> it's pay six grand for it. It's ridiculous. Drift the drift tax, you know. Yeah. It's, it's it's all because of this. It's all because of your uh, your magazine that caused the drift tax. It is indeed. So you guys can write Thanks, to Super, Super Street, Street and uh, <laughs> just go ahead and uh, complain to Super Street about the drift tax and why 240s that are worth uh, 500 dollars cost 10 grand. They did it. Somebody should buy my 240 for 10 grand. <laughs> So that's how you got started into drifting, but what got you started into cars? Like what was, uh, was that it? Was drifting what really got you moving towards the car scene or were you into cars prior to that? Um, I didn't get it really into cars until I was probably around 19 or 18. Um, my parents bought me a Jeep and Jeep. my dad bought me the Jeep Bible, which the Jeep Bible is a, basically a how-to for how to do just about anything on a you know, an early CJ5 or CJ7. Is that what you had, a CJ? Yeah, I had a CJ7. It was an 84 AMC. Nice. Back when Jeeps were awesome. My uh, my grandpa has an AMC that we used to drive when I was a kid. Um, and this has a it has a 360 in it. And only one brake worked. <laughs> um, so it constantly felt like it was going to kill you. Like, it was fast. And it was a Jeep. And then it had one tire to stop. I think all old Jeeps were like that. <laughs> I was an 84, it was a four-cylinder. And so when I got on the interstate, I felt like I was going to die. Because it was, the top speed was like 56 miles an hour. It was ridiculous. But that wasn't that the speed limit back in 1970? <laughs> Jokes. My goodness. No? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. So Jeep, that's where that's where all this started. This, this, is, started. this, is, this is news to me. I never knew that. That's where it started. A Jeep. Bo had a Jeep. CJ7. Nice. That's something that we have in common. I almost died in a Jeep, and you drove a Jeep. Yep. <laughs> That's where we get this bond. <laughs> so after the Jeep, what happened next? Was that was that in high school? Were you still in high school? I was still in high school. You're still in high school. That was my first vehicle that I ever Senior got. or sixteen? Uh, I was seventeen. Okay. I was in trouble a lot. So <laughs> um, my sixteenth birthday, I think my dad got me. Like a pretty nice stereo, like a Yamaha stereo system mm-hmm. for my room instead of a car because <laughs> I was in trouble. <clears throat> I was in trouble all through high school and because uh, of my grades. And uh, I think I got a Jeep when I was 17 when, when my parents finally got tired of carding card me around. Oh, okay. Yeah. You were annoying enough. Yeah. And then when I turned 18, they got me a graduation car, which was a brand new... 1995 Honda Civic EX. Dang. It was black, sunroof, V Tech. Woo! Honda game. Man. Yeah, dude. And uh, six days after I got it, I wrecked it. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used like, to. We, we lived, on, we lived at, kind of out in the country. 
And we had this like swervy back road that we take to the house. And man, I thought I was Steve McQueen. <laughs> we share a birthday, by the way, me and Steve McQueen. <laughs> But, uh, man, I thought I was something special driving that thing around, and so I drove it 90 everywhere I went. <clears throat> Always in VTEC. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm driving down the back road, and I'm coming over this hill, and I swear to this day, there was a yellow Mustang. Like the really crappy ones. The, like, 94, 95. It's in 95. Really, really crappy body style. Yeah. Like, when they just revamped them, was right in the middle of the road. So I swerved, and there were leaves like all on the side of the road. I got squirrely, and I just started spinning uh, up under like a in, in like a barbed wire fence. Mm. And then uh, I think I took out maybe like one fence post. Um, <clears throat> didn't destroy the car. The car was completely drivable. So it really wasn't even that bad. Um, it was six thousand dollars worth of uh, worth of repairs on it. That's a lot. Yeah. And they didn't total it. I guess it was basically it was brand, brand new. It was brand new. It was six days old. So what was it, like seven grand new? <clears throat> it was not seven grand new. <laughs> I think back then they were probably around like uh, 15, 16 grand, oh, okay. something like that. Right. For the, you know, it was like the top of the line, that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, I mean, it had VTEC. <clears throat> it had VTEC. <laughs> Dang. So, yeah. Um, That's a lot of money back then. My parents had it fixed, and they reluctantly gave it back to <laughs> to drive. And then, probably about two or three months after that, um, I think I was already in college at the University of Montevallo in Alabama. So, you got that for graduating high yeah. school. Totaled it within a week. Or not totaled it, but crashed the crap out of it. Um, then a couple months later, you go to college in the same car. Right, exactly. Um, I was heading, I was, I was back at my parents' house for a weekend. And I'm going back to school, and a car just like mine, almost exactly like mine, uh, started revving on me on the interstate. You know, started like pulling out, like wanted to do this like riser flyby and whatnot. And anyways, long story short, we got into a long race down the length of 459. They were doing like 30. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a at some point. A state trooper started following us, and they still uh, haven't broke the speed limit. They set there. up a roadblock. Ahead. No way! <laughs> they set up a roadblock ahead, <laughs> and because we were we were going easily in excess of 110, 115 miles an hour, um, swerving in and out of traffic. I think at one point I passed somebody off the shoulder of the road. <laughs> uh, it was really you know ill advised race, but uh, <clears throat> we by, we got pulled over at okay. So hold on, time out. okay. So after this, Bo became a cop. <laughs> this is true. This All is right. true. Um, Back to the story. We got pulled over at an exit, probably 15. So 15 no roadblock. You didn't make it to the roadblock. You pulled over before then. Um, we pulled over when we saw it. Oh, okay. We saw it and we were like, oh, snap. <laughs> so we pulled it because it was an exit. They put a roadblock right in front of where the exit was. So pretty much forcing everyone to exit. And... When we pulled over, when we slowed down, um, the state trooper caught up to us, and I could see his lights in my rear view, and so I pulled over on the shoulder, and uh, they pulled everybody off the road, and I think that's when I realized that the roadblock was actually for us. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and uh, we didn't go to jail. They took us to the they took us to the station, but the other guy was just as young as I was. And they call their parents, <laughs> which was way worse, <laughs> way worse. So at that point, the was that the end of the Honda? Yeah, the that car got the taken. Honda. The car got taken away from me at that point. <laughs> um, so this car was like two to three months is all you owned it. Yeah, maybe, well maybe three, four months. Oh, okay, three, four months. Yeah, so less than half a months. year, your second car, and uh, it's taken away. Yep. What happened to the Jeep? Did you sell it? Yeah, I think we traded the. We either I think we sold the Jeep outright. Uh, for a down payment on the okay. Civic. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, high five. I never <laughs> had a robot. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think my dad knew that I was probably going to get in trouble with a car, with any <laughs> car that he got me. Uh, but he was a car guy when he was younger, not so much when he was older. Okay. He, he got out, out of it. 
Um, his his dad, I think, used to bootleg. Oh, okay. Um, down in the south in Alabama, and he would give my dad after using the cars for bootlegging. He would give them to my dad, and my dad would drive them, race them, whatever he did. So potentially, your grandfather helped start NASCAR. <laughs> possibly, very possibly. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Well. So I spent the next couple of years in college without a car. You didn't have a car? I didn't have a car. <laughs> I mean, I was, on, I was living on campus. I didn't really need a car, so All right. that was my life. You didn't need to race anybody anymore? <sighs> I, I did. You know, <laughs> like, I would have. You put me in any car, and I would have raced somebody. Well, obviously, you raced somebody in a Honda. I know, right. So, after college, what do you get then? When, okay, so when do you get into fun cars? You know, like the Honda was fun because it was more of a, a sporty style car. Right. But, uh, but I didn't modify it or anything. I just, you know, it was a factory car the whole time. Maybe the that's a better question. The whole four months that what I was the what was, <laughs> what was the first car that you modified? What was the first car that got you into? The first car that I actually bought wheels for. And that's like everybody's first modification. Yeah. yeah. It's super easy. You just pulled them on. I bought some TSW quads for my 84 Honda Accord. Honda Accord, that was after the Civic? It was. A ways um, after? Uh, maybe a year after. Okay. Uh, I, I think I bought the Accord for my grandfather. My parents were done, like, buying me cars. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I spent a thousand dollars and got this 84 Accord. It was a manual, which I was proud of, and um, it was a pretty neat car. 84 Accords are pretty neat. They have lots of stupid like emissions equipment and stuff like that, but I wasn't into working on engines back then, so it didn't, didn't, it didn't bother me at all. Um, yeah, I, the first thing I did for it was buy wheels, and you know I'd get up under the hood every once in a while and, and just clean up the engine bay, you know, just make it look pretty. It's still there. Yeah, like, here's a big dusty surface. I'll wipe this off. <laughs> but that was just, I didn't know anything about cars back then. So it was the 84 Accord, and I think it blew a head gasket at some point. Then I went to the military, and when I went to the military, I didn't have a car for quite a while, quite a while. And I and you sold the Accord before, or you just, where you were stationed and things like that, you weren't able to have a car? I wasn't able to take it. And I think my parents did something with the Accord. They were just like, we'll take care of this. You know, maybe sold it to the junkyard or something. I don't know. It disappeared. I always wonder what happened to those wheels because they were super dope. <laughs> they were terrible, like size and offset, but I loved them. <clears throat> and I received them. I remember the wheels, getting the wheels at my front door because I received them cash on delivery. Nobody does that anymore because yeah. it's a terrible, shady thing to do. Yeah. You know, like nobody's going to pay cash on delivery anymore. They'll rob you of your wheels <laughs> and be like, bye, delivery guy. <laughs> yeah, like the guy showed up and he was like, I was like, okay, 600 bucks, here you go. The UPS guy or whatever. That's crazy. Yeah, cash on delivery. <clears throat> hmm. It was pretty neat. Times have changed. Cash isn't even a thing anymore. Yeah, right? You know, like huh. who has cash? I have cash in my pocket right now. How much? Of course, I'm old. Yeah. So I have... I also have where there's originals. What the hell's that? <laughs> That's old people can't. <laughs> Ronnie, does, he's holding a freaking uh, talk show here. Doesn't know where, where there's originals are. No, no, they're no. like a toffee. They're like a toffee, like coffee flavored Dude, candy so nasty. That, uh, that old people give to little kids. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I hate old people. Exactly. Exactly. So, that was the first car that you did. Not even something substantial to it. It was a basically kind of a basic sort of mod. What was the yeah. first substantial car? Um, it was another Honda Civic. <laughs> uh, Hondas were I don't know I don't know what it was, but uh, I was I was a Honda guy back. But then. it was pretty. The Hondas were pretty hot back then. I mean, they really was, were. That I mean, was, it was the big. It was ninety. It was ninety five to ninety. I mean, I was in high school from ninety one to ninety five, and from ninety five to. 2000, I was either um, in college or in the military, and so I was around a bunch of car guys a lot, and yeah, Hondas were the thing. Hondas yeah. were super hot back then. Important, because nobody else made any, like, decent imports back then. What did you have? You had the Eclipse. Yep. Um, the Honda. What else, what else was back then? 
Yeah, I mean, 3000 GT, but that's kind of like more like a Halo car, you know, like a super. All the 240 SXs were back then. Yeah, but, that's but true. Nobody, but they were expensive. Like, um, when we got my Civic, I want to say the Civic was like 15 or 16 grand. Uh, 240 SX was like 21 or 22 grand. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it was like, mm. you know, the BRZ of today. Yeah. A little lower priced. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you wanted like a like an S S fourteen that was like all decked out, I think it was upwards of like twenty three, twenty four grand, something wow. like that. I think. Hmm. Somebody uh, put in the comments with Buzz Rider. Google that. <laughs> Google check me. Um, Anyways, but when I was in the military, <laughs> I got a nineteen eighty seven Civic wagon. It was all wheel drive. An eighty six, so a wagon van. An eighty seven. Eighty seven. Yeah, it's a wagon van, right? Yes. Okay. So, and it was all wheel drive. Dang. And it had a four-wheel drive low granny gear That's so when you put it it was like over here yeah and you put it forth and all the wheels are locked and you know i used to take it off road and all kinds of shit i it was the first car that i actually tried to do this like front wheel drifting thing you know with the e-brake and like keep going and carry <laughs> momentum and stuff <clears throat> i worked on a flight line so you would go and you cross the runway and because I, I lived on uh, holloman air force base and being in the Air Force. Let me back up. I went in the Air Force. You said you were in the military. Yeah. So Holloman Air Force Base, I worked on the flight line in the very middle of the runway. It's at a radar, radar mm -hmm. shelter. And you cross the runway. Once you get across the runway, there's all these like dirt roads that intersect and stuff. It's all these really cool places to do all these awesome rally slides <laughs> and stuff. So I was doing that in my little Civic and everybody that I worked with thought I was ridiculous because, you know, they drove like normal. <laughs> and I drove this little shitty Civic wagon man. What are uh, what are grown up people cars? <laughs> you exactly. know what, what's a grown up Camrys and Accords. Yeah, who buys like that? that? <laughs> but uh, the first modification that I ever did to that was I changed the clutch on it. Well, not a modification so much, but I actually had to change the clutch on it to get it running. Okay. I bought it for five hundred seventy five bucks, and then a, a, my next door neighbor, who was a huge car guy from Canada. He, uh, yeah, it sucks to be a car guy in Canada and rust. <laughs> and he uh, he helped me change my clutch, and we did the whole thing in the little hobby shop there on base. Oh, that's um, cool. After that, I actually bought a Weber carburetor, downdraft carburetor kit that came with like a manifold, the carburetor, all the lines, you know, electric choke, all that kind of stuff. And that was the first modification I ever did to a car. So that car was fuel injected? No, it was carburetor. Oh, it was carburetor. Yeah, it had a little two barrel, it had one of those like two barrel carburetors with like a thousand vacuum hoses oh, going yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. It was ridiculous. <laughs> it had a, uh, a diagram under the hood where all the vacuum hoses went oh, okay. and it just looked like a plate of spaghetti. It was ridiculous. <laughs> kind of like a BMW. Exactly. Like the BMW. Terrible. With all the fuel injection lines. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was the first major modification I did to a car. It was a, a carburetor kit. Nice. Yeah, it was. It was neat. It was really cool. You open the hood. It was like this little unassuming Civic. It was that pale blue color. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like just that muted blue. You open the hood and there's this like Weber carburetor <laughs> sitting there with a the big freaking air filter on top and everything. You're like, whoa. <laughs> and I even went to the junkyard and I got like a, a CRX SI valve cover for it, which was red, and stuck it on there. It made it look racy, <laughs> but it still only had 70 horsepower. Um, I just want to say I'm a little jealous. I like Wagon Vans. I've, I've never owned a Honda, but I would totally buy a Wagon Van. Nobody did anything with Wagon Vans back then. Like, Wagon Vans were completely forgotten back then. That's crazy. Like, now people are doing case swaps yeah. and all-wheel drive drivetrains from from uh, CRVs. And they, they're doing all kinds of crazy yeah. stuff. But back then, like, you try to find information on the internet... In 1999, about Wago vans, there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. But I had it all gutted out, battery relocation to the rear, <laughs> so it balanced out and everything. Yeah, dude. I drew, I even jumped it one time. I think it landed like right on the freaking course of board. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Oh, it, was. <laughs> it was the first car I gutted as well. So yeah, I learned everything on a Civic Wago van. Nice. <laughs> So that's where the end of Ricer comes from. That's it. That's exactly it. Ricer for life. <laughs> you take yo. It's all right. It's all right. I think I'm more of a Ricer than you when I've never even owned a Honda. <laughs> I just do whatever I want. Right on. So after that, 
eventually you get started drifting and you get the S14. The S14 is a stock car basically, yeah. right? Completely factory. <clears throat> so did it have a limited slip in it? Is that no. what? No, so it you were drifting in open diff. Yeah. yeah. Open diff drifting. Yeah. Wow, it, it was, was just basically hard. like, it was like get up to like 60 <laughs> miles an hour and just cut the wheel as hard as you can and just <laughs> slam on the gas and freaking carry it as far as you could. You try to transition, but transitions are hard in a, a freaking open differential. But I didn't know anything else. You That's know, what I was going to ask. Did I, you know that it needed to be locked? I had no idea. Here? I had no idea. So you just, you just assumed like, this I was is doing, how it is. I was doing lots of reading at the time <laughs> and... And I guess I just haven't got to that yet. Okay. <laughs> but uh, eventually I did get it welded. Okay. Eventually it did get welded. When it got a CA18 swap. Oh, okay. So it got a CA18 in it. And so this is the car that you got the CA. Mm -hmm. And it didn't, something was wrong with it? Uh, I got the CA and there was nothing wrong with the motor. <laughs> um, the, uh, the KA had died. I went online and just started shopping around for CA. I ordered the CA. And this was in 2000 and three or 2004, somewhere around there. <clears throat> and I got the CA online, got it shipped to me, and I had no idea what I was doing. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Um, when would this be your first motor swap? Yes, okay. yes. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a it's, big, it's a fuel injected car with wiring harness and everything. So it's a really in-depth thing. Was there standalone, was that a thing back then? Uh, standalone was a thing back then, but not that I knew of. Okay. Not that I knew of, it wasn't. It was like way beyond anything that I knew about cars back then. I was just kind of shoot fire and blind, you know, back then. Going for it. Yeah, um, and the CA um, belongs in an S13 chassis. And it's really easy to wire up a CA for an S13, like when you put it in there. Okay. Um, I want to say like all the fuse boxes and all that are kind of set up for it and they're kind of in the same place. But when you put it in an S14, everything's kind of different. So, um, it took me a while. Like I spent a year doing the swap and wiring it up and everything, and I never even got it running. Um, and I ended up swapping it with another kid who had a 240, uh, a fastback, like a 92 or 93 fastback. I should one of the sharp nose ones. <clears throat> I ended up swapping it to him because he wanted something turbo, something interesting, something swapped. And I told him, hey, look, it doesn't run. He was like, I don't care. And I was like, okay, I'll take your running car for my <laughs> running car. And I drifted the hell out of that 93 for the next probably year and a half, two years, um, until the, until I got, I drifted it so much that I, I just got tired of it. It just got boring. This is in a dual cam car. In a dual cam car. It basically, welded, welded diff. First, basically. First, first car I ever welded differential on. Okay, so welded diff, but other than that, basically a stock car. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think I... So it is possible. <laughs> you have to turbo K. Eventually, I put like some lowering springs on it. Okay. Put some, uh, put a sway bars. Were coil bars back then? Or not no, really a they thing? weren't. They weren't common back then. Were they even a thing? Yeah, they were. Oh, a thing. Okay. They were a thing. Real, they just weren't common. Early. It's not like you could go on eBay or Amazon <laughs> and just be like, oh, there's some, you know, eight hundred dollar coilovers or okay. whatever, and, and snatch them up. <clears throat> People made them. It just wasn't common. Okay. Um. So I drifted that car for a while. And uh, eventually, the, this, this kid called me back, and he was like, his name was Eric Lindkey. And he called me back, and he said, look, I can't get this thing running. He said, he, he, he bought a whole harness made for the motor and the chassis for that car. And he was like, I still can't get it running. Man. I was like, shit. And I was like, well, I'm up to the challenge. Because at that point... I had been drifting for about a year and a half, and I had a bunch of really good people in my life that were um, mechanics. So this would be like the real birth of being a car guy and where it all kind of blew up. Definitely, and, definitely. And where you got connections, because that's a, that's a really important thing. Any new car guys out there that watch our channel, building connections within the car community is really essential to growing as a car enthusiast. I completely agree. Um, and in the car community, for the most part, is so open and everybody's so willing to help that you can call up anybody or message them on Facebook, and, and they're usually more than willing to just pour out oh, all yeah, the definitely. information. Don't try to ask questions on like Facebook because you'll get torn down. <laughs> <laughs> call somebody up, find somebody who's a you know who's knowledgeable about cars, and just you know ask them straight up. Say, hey, I got this issue, and you know whatever. And <clears throat> I've had lots of friends over 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 time that have just 
helped me so much with uh, just learning about the different aspects of, of uh, drifting, suspension, motor work, fuel injection, things like that. It's been a big deal. Um, and that was, like you said, that was kind of the birth. And the... So you have a little fire, and then that's when somebody pours yeah. some gas on you and you yeah. really lit up. Because I got that, I got that CAS14 car back, and I had to run it in two weeks. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I just had so much more knowledge. So you, so you, more knowledge you busted a year trying to get it done. Yeah. He spent a year and a half trying to get it done, and then you, you get it with this new harness and everything, and basically put it together and it's ready to rock yep. in two weeks. Yep. It's awesome. And then. And I was confident when I got it back. When I got it back, I was like, okay, let's check this, let's check this, let's do this, let's make sure these wires are running here. You know, let's make sure the, the starting system is wired up right, you know, yeah. so the thing actually cranks over, that sort of thing. And, and I was just like, all right, let's put some plugs in it, get some fuel in it, and boom, fire it right up. Wow. Do you remember what the issue was? Uh, was it a bunch of little things? Or it, was it, it wasn't. Like it, was a, it was a bunch of little things. Like, oh. All right. Uh. Where were we? Um, we just had a long conversation about how long these should be. So let us know how long you guys think they should be. This one's probably going to be about an hour. We'll see when we're done. <laughs> we're in 30 minutes of footage right now. We, uh, we got to talking about my life and whatnot, and uh, we looked up, and the camera had stopped recording. Apparently, the camera records for half an hour and then stops. Yeah. Uh, so that's where we are. Um, anyways... We had just got done talking about your birth of drifting and stuff, and, and we were moving on to present day. And, and I wanted to know about your last drift car and how you transitioned from a Volvo, of all things, a wagon, into an FCR, except uh, you know, it's kind of like two opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Um, I, dr I drifted the Volvo wagon for a while. Uh, I drifted it a lot. I went to a lot of events. And uh, that car made most of your connections here. It definitely correct? did. It definitely did. Uh, um, <clears throat> finding information on Volvos was a little challenging, but I got on the Turbo Bricks website, and I just met a bunch of people that are from Arizona. Um, Alex Keys, Jesse Obuz, uh, Mario uh, I met Montez Suho. I don't know if you know him. Um, uh, Felix. Uh, man, who else? A bunch of people. I met a bunch of people through all those. Um, anyways, so you bought this car not knowing anybody, and then once you owned it, you got on this website and you built a base. Right, right. There's no like, there's no like eBay parts for Volvos like there are for Civics and 240SXs. Yeah. Everything is either custom work or there are a few specific guys out there that'll do coilovers and will do, you know, suspension bars, things like that. Um, so I got in touch with, uh, I think, I, I want to say Alex got me in touch with Jesse O'Buzz, and Jesse O'Buzz built my entire suspension. Yeah. He built my turbo manifold, my exhaust, my seat brackets. He built everything for my Volvo, pretty much. Um, and I drifted it for, I don't know, three or four straight years. Wow. Yeah, it was super reliable. I mean, it was at one point, I drove it six hours to Albuquerque, drifted it for two straight days, and drove it six hours back. Interesting. And it was super simple and inexpensive because I broke the timing belt on the way back from Albuquerque and I was able to buy it for like 20 bucks at the auto zone and change it in the parking lot in about 45 minutes, get back on the road and drive back here. Wow. So this car, you drifted it, this is the longest drift car you've owned at this point. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, and what happened to it? Was it just too reliable? It wasn't an event? It just got, it got boring. Yeah. It got okay. boring. It was, uh. You know, it was shaped like a shoebox. It looked really good. It looked really good. Sit on its wheels, all low and everything. But um, it just got boring and boring looking. And I wanted, you know, one of those JDM legends. You know, I got you. And uh, I've always been a, an, an RX-7 fan. And uh, I actually used to own one, very similar to the S5 I own now. Um, and I just I got rid of it too fast before I really knew. Didn't give it a chance. Didn't give it a chance. I understand that. I feel like that in my Fiero. <laughs> Your Fiero? <laughs> you didn't get the chance to build it into a Ferrari. The yeah. Ferrari that it could be. Exactly. <laughs> had so much potential. And I was just like, it's a Pontiac. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the same way about Pontiacs. But you know, Alex Keys has been trying to push me into putting a, uh, a Pontiac Quad 4 into something. 
it's a four cylinder motor. Put out, I don't know, maybe 150 horsepower that came in like uh, Grand Ams and Pontiac mm -hmm. Sunfires and stuff like that back in the mid to late 90s. Um, apparently, he said you, it, it has like a, you know, one of, one of those uh, uh, spark plug wire covers okay. over the motor where the, where the cam covers go, and it has two separate cam covers. And he said when you remove that spark plug cover, it looks like a really old, cool race motor. With the two cam, with the two individual hmm. cam cam covers on it, he said it looks really cool. So, <laughs> Alex is probably the most interesting car guy that I know, because every car guy that I know is pretty like straight as an arrow as far as cars go. It's like big power, you know, just being as baller as you can. Or maybe car. they're a Honda guy, or maybe they're a Volvo guy, or maybe they're a a Nissan guy, or maybe they're an American car guy. Yeah, yeah, but in general, most car guys all have like the same vision yeah. of building a car to either like look good or go good or something. Alex just likes the most like obscure things you could ever think of. <laughs> you know, like he just buys weird stuff, and he knows the most obscure things. Yeah, and he'll like he'll he'll buy a car that you've never heard of, and he'll tell you like where it was built and why it was built and what fuel injection system it has in it and how that fuel injection system works and you're like I didn't even know this car existed. <laughs> so that is definitely Alex Keys. That is definitely Alex Keys. We plan on having him on the show. We're um, definitely having him on the show. Hopefully soon. Uh, I gotta get in touch with him. But anyways, so you drift that, you get the RX7, and the RX7 is where it is today. We all know um, that and if you don't, don't be a loser like us and go back and watch one of our previous videos. Um, hopefully we'll have a video up soon with it running. It's it's getting really it's close. It's really close to a first start. It's really close. So really we're close. excited about that. Um, so I guess the next question is, that's that's all your car life and, and where you are today. And any other questions about Bo's vehicles, they're on the channel. But let's talk about the channel. Why why did you do YouTube? What was, what was the kind of push to doing YouTube? And, and what do you hope happens with YouTube and, and kind of, I guess this is more a question for both of us, but where, where do we see this going? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, the, originally it was your idea. Yeah. It was your idea and I thought it was a good idea. I thought it was a good motivator to keep us working on our projects consistently. The fact that we have to put out a video or two every week. Yeah just really keeps us thinking of like the things that we need and want to do to our vehicles. Yeah, um, so a little bit about Bo and I. Bo's very like open and kind of outgoing, likes to meet new people. He enjoys that. Me, I don't, I'm not, I'm not like an ass or anything like that. <laughs> you know, I'm not like, you know, like put up a front so that nobody can come and talk to me. I just don't go out of my way to talk to other people. I'm pretty like, I'm happy and content where I am and I'm going to do me. And if you want to be a part of this, like come be a part of it. I think he's trying to say that we need each other. Yeah, that, well, that's, that's, that's it. Like I wanted to do this, but I wasn't confident that I would have, because I, I, I've never even recorded video before. So I wasn't confident in my skills to do this as well as myself to do this. So. I asked Bo to help me out. We had been hanging out all the time prior to this anyways. Um, so it wasn't out of my way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it, wasn't, it wasn't inconvenient. <laughs> so yeah. before Bo, there was Derek, who you guys saw a while back. And Derek joined the Army. And probably six months or maybe almost a year before that, Bo and I met. And we went to a drift event. Um, it was him, Alex, AJ, and I. That was up in Phoenix, right? Yeah. Um, and it was pretty crazy. Uh, I think that's when that car jumped the K-Rail. Um, yeah. It, there, were, there was some crazy stuff. Phoenix is wild. If you guys want to go to a crazy drift event in Arizona, go to, uh, what, are they, what is it called? Um, go Fast. Go Fast Entertainment. Yeah, Go Fast Entertainment. One of their events up in Phoenix, they're crazy. A car burnt down the week after, <laughs> and another car jumped the K-Rail the, yeah. the, the, day, the week after. They're wild up wild. in Phoenix. They are wild. <laughs> So that was the first time we really hung out. Um, and then like we played ping pong for a night at my old house. Um, and then Derek left and I didn't really have anybody else to hang out with. I have, I have other friends, but everybody else kind of had like things going on. 
And so Bo and I kind of hooked up, and, and, and this, is, this is what it became. And so far, I think it's going pretty good. It's going really well. It's, it's, it's what we hoped it would be so far. Yeah, we definitely uh, started getting projects moving really quick. Yeah, um, One thing that I wish, I wish we would have started this sooner. Um, because it would have been really cool to get the build of the hard body. I think that would have been a neat thing to have for everybody. That's that's really my only regret so far with this is just starting it when we started it. I yeah. wish we would have started it, you yeah. know, two it years prior. It would have been nice to get a video of me doing everything to the RX-7. Yeah, you know, there's there's so much stuff that we did before this, and and we talked about that when we started. Yeah. We talked about you know it sucks that this happened and this happened, but if we put it off, then it's never going to happen. Yeah, right and on. so far, the hard body's at a done state. It's done enough. Um, the Ford is done enough. Um, the Subaru is done enough, but we didn't really do anything to that, so it doesn't count. Um, your RX-7 is getting moving. Or, uh, not the RX-7, the RX-7 is already moving. The WRX is getting moving. Yeah. Um, we haven't done much on the Volvo lately. We need to probably get moving on that a little bit. Um, there's nothing to do to the 240. We fixed it the other day. Um, the BMW. We can, always, we can always paint it and kit it. Yeah. That costs money. <laughs> I feel like it needs a, a choo-choo boy before it needs a wide boy. Yeah. Um, and then the BMW, but we don't talk about BMW. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of why we started. But was it worth it? Yeah, totally. What do you think? You think? Yeah. We've, yeah. And we've we've seen a lot of progress just within the last couple of weeks, and that's really helped motivate us too. I agree. Um, we're getting a little down on ourselves after sitting it. What, what, we were at 200 forever. Yeah. It's in the 200s. Yeah, we were at 200 subscribers for, for a while. And uh, it's nice to see um, the, what am I trying to say? It's nice to see the. Like the um, growth of it, you know. It's nice to see the growth, yeah. And then the, the back and forth, like hearing from you guys, like when you guys comment on stuff. And, and, the and, payoff, I guess that's the word I was yeah. looking for. It's nice to see the payoff for for all our hard work, you know? And we're not just looking for subscribers. I mean, we're looking to entertain people, you know? And that's kind of what this is. Um, we want to be entertaining and helpful, and if anybody has questions about any of our projects or any of their projects that are related to our projects, you know, we're always here. And that's that's kind of what we want to do. And plus, we get to hang out and do this and have fun, and that's a big deal. Yeah, and, and hopefully with this, with the Loser's Lounge, We'll be able to uh, learn more about our friends that we have around us and uh, different car shops in this town, and, and hopefully we can expand and go even outside of the state of Arizona with this. That'd be awesome. Um, but we're we're having a lot of fun. We really are, and, and we hope everything continues to go as well as it has been. And thank you for the support. And we appreciate it a lot. And hopefully you guys enjoy this. Um, this <laughs> was our. Uh, it was my idea, and I brought it to Bo, and Bo's like, oh, yeah, I think that's great. We've never seen anything like this. We've never seen anybody kind of interview just car guys to this extent. No, I don't think so. You know, like, I was, I was talking to my wife about uh, the Grand Tour in um, Top Gear, you know, before that, and how they had the thing where they interviewed the celebrity, and now they have their little conversation street, but they don't yeah. really tell you anything. Like, you don't learn anything from their conversation yeah. street. It's just kind of like a segue to go into something else. Um... So I just thought it'd be nice for somebody to do this, and we plan on talking about more controversial subjects, but we don't want to get long-winded if that's not what you guys want to watch. So, right on. So yeah. are we done for tonight? I think so. Um, I think that's all we really need. We got our first about. sticker up on the wall. We got a sticker. Um, also, if you guys have stickers and you uh, want to see them on our wall, just give us a little DM down on the Instagram. Um, we'll put the Instagram down here, maybe over here, maybe on both space. Maybe right here. Yeah. And you can, uh, we'll hook up with you and you can uh, send us a sticker. We'll stick it up on our wall and shout you out. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks, thanks, for, yeah. thanks for having me on. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah, of course. Hopefully uh, they enjoy it. If you could say goodbye to your fans. Bye to my fans. <laughs>